channel on changing the narratives of mother africa we are here in the beautiful dakar senegal oh my goodness i'm loving this place already like look at the view behind me this is breathtaking you know you can only find this in africa i know nowhere in the world. specifically right here <laughs> right? Wow. this is my favorite place here in your dakar. favorite place in dakar absolutely how did you discover this place i discovered it through my friends they your brought me here to play wow. music so wow. we had a big bonfire like 10 african men all singing and dancing and just having a beautiful time it's something i've never seen in america so wow part of how i fell in love with this beach <laughs> amazing but we are not here to talk about this beach we are here to talk about you hey who are you hey i'm maya I'm Ma <laughs> I am Maya. No, you know I'm also Maya. So okay. nice to meet you, name. Nice to meet you too. Amazing. Okay. Yes. So Maya Gigi Davis. Okay, yes. and my name is I am Maya. Yes. <laughs> you are in Senegal. I am. Your name is Maya. Mm -hmm. You are in Senegal right now. Mm -hmm. So Maya in Senegal. Mm -hmm. But where are you from? I'm originally from. I was born in Indiana, but I lived my past 13 years in New York City. So I'm coming directly from New York City, Harlem. Harlem. Wow. <laughs> and all the way from New York City, mm -hmm. right here in Dakar, Senegal. Yes, beautiful. What Dakar. brought you to Dakar? Wow, that's like a multi-layer answer. But mm -hmm. um, part of that goes with you know the fact that I needed something more in life. I needed something that was rewarding. I needed to be using my energy towards something that I felt like was purposeful. Wow. My grandmother had passed away and I, it was really hard dealing with that. And then six months later, my father passed away. So I thought, what am I doing with my life? So when I'm at the end of that path, I feel fulfilled, you know? Wow. And, and Africa has always been in my vision. I always had a connection to the continent. So when uh, I reached out to RJ Mahdi and he offered me a job, I took it. <laughs> wow. I'm going to talk to RJ later. Uh -huh. He offered you a job. Yes. And so that, that means this is what RJ is doing in here. Yes. He, the Made in Africa project okay. is his company. He's the CEO of that project. It's an amazing project. It has so many different levels to it. Um, I am director of fashion. Okay. So I work with all of our online store stuff, but then there's also an investment side of it. There's a real estate side and there's a relocation wow. side. So wow. it's an amazing company. You, you've been in Senegal for how long? I've been here for four months. For four months. What is the experience like? Uh, I mean, it's been overwhelming, you know, to see, uh, you know, because this is a huge city, five million people. and. I have I, I'm coming from New York City. There's eight million on the island where I live, but okay. I come here and I'm still like overwhelmed uh, with the amount of people, well. the chaos, the movement of everything. So initially, it kind of set me, took me off my my beaten path a little bit to see like so many people. But it's a beautiful place. The oceans are it's a peninsula surrounded by the ocean. So I well. love that about well. Dakar. You're not scared of moving to Dakar. You know, I made the decision and, and I was happy with it. And then like maybe a week, two weeks before I came, my heart started pumping crazy. <laughs> like, am I really going to do this? Oh, wow. Um, so I had a little bit of reservation, a little okay. fear, but right. I definitely just followed my heart. You know, you followed your heart, but do you regret moving to Senegal? No, not at all. Not at all? No, I don't regret there, it. There are people out there who are looking for work to take a step just like you. They are scared of moving to Dakar. They are scared yeah. of like, when they come to Africa, people are not going to like them. When they come to Africa, people are going to defraud them and stuff like that. Share your experience to people like that. What are you going to say? I mean, I understand their perspective, especially if they hadn't left their country yeah. before. You know, you have to get out of the country to see that people are people everywhere. You know, there's no reason. I understand fear and fear can be paralyzing, but you got to sometimes push yourself to try more things, Jeez. to experience things. And when you get out of the country, you recognize that no, everything's not perfect everywhere, just like it's not where you live. Exactly. But it is acceptable. People are warm. They're welcoming. You know, you'll you'll find your way. I, I don't speak Wallop. I don't speak French, <laughs> but I'm making it. I'm making it. And I have a bit of a handicap, but I'm wow. making it. <laughs> You're African-American. Yes. You're living in Dakar right now. Mm -hmm. Do you see yourself different from the local people? I mean, I definitely stand out. Um, but the people are so nice. So, I mean, you know, they're, they're sweet to me. They'll be like, you know, you and me, we're alike. <laughs> but but, but let, me, let, me, let me correct like, something. Yes. You said you stand out. What makes you stand out? Uh, I think because, um, I mean, it could be many things. Even how I tie my scarf. They okay. say the way I tie my scarf is the American okay. way. 
or you know I'm light skinned in a sea of beautiful brown skinned people oh, yeah. or uh, I don't speak the native language okay. or I dress uh, westernized nice. you know like today I'm, I'm mixing the two cultures <laughs> but I stand out sometimes like if I have my ripped jeans on and or my baseball cap I don't necessarily look like other girls here <laughs> Wow, that's an amazing experience in here. But before I let you go, there's an, a beautiful Amer African American sister out there who is scared to move to Africa. Uh, he told me that what a Maya. She told me that what a Maya. I'm really scared of moving to Africa. But if you can find me a beautiful sister to advise me, I'm definitely gonna take the step. What are you gonna tell that beautiful sister out there? I'm gonna say, live your best life. Don't ever be afraid to do anything that's in your heart. I mean, if it's in your heart to move, I'm not gonna say just move to move. But you have to be in the vortex, you have to fill it, you have to know that this is where the universe is leading me. And if that is your space, then you should go for it and you should live it wholeheartedly. Put 100% into it. My sister, if that is your space, then you have to move. Thank you so much. And I'm going to I'm gonna talk to RJ after talking to you. Uh -huh. And I know there's a lot RJ has to tell me. Yeah. As he brought you to Senegal, what's going on between you and RJ? <laughs> I'm going to leave that for the viewers to tell me. I don't know. I, what <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed this amazing episode. Don't forget to share to someone, like, and subscribe. It's your boy, Mr. Ghana, baby, right here in Dakar, Senegal. Peace out.